just not on at all? Hmm? I'm sorry, Colin. Not a bit? No, no. Odd if it wasn't like this. I still like to snuggle up. Do you mind? My darling Roz, I'm not a monster. It's only three weeks ago. Are you warm enough without the blankets? <sighs> I'm too hot. I know it's only three weeks, my pet. In fact, abortion is overrated. Men make it such a melodramatic topic. The backstreet aspect. It was bliss, physically. The anesthetic alone was worth the price. I quite understand why Billy took drugs. <laughs> Nevertheless, it, it is a shock to the system. It won't have made me permanently frigid. I never, for a moment... Yes, you did. Unless, yes, you of did. of course, you've stopped loving me. Oh, are you starting that? I wondered how long it would take. Well, it wasn't rape. It started as rape. It might as well... I might as well have lied to you about it. There was no need to tell you how it ended. No need? But you said that night in the garden when you found me. Are you going to say you don't remember? You were leaning against a tree. You said we'd go on as if it hadn't happened. I thought that was so beautiful. Our relationship was on a higher plane. I saw Billy while you were in hospital. Saw him? He dropped into the office. What happened? He came to ask if you were all right. I, I wonder what he was after. Were you polite? I blame myself for having brought him here. It was unintelligent. One should have outgrown that sort of thing. Nights I work late by myself, my eyes get tired, I have a few drinks, I'm more receptive to the beauties of nature. But I've seen the scenes before. One hopes for something different. I, I just missed a train. I was somewhat annoyed. It was relaxing to strike up a conversation with a friendly chap from a different walk of life and clearly not stupid. Our chat took quite a philosophical turn. One should leave well alone. You liked him. He had charm. It serves a purpose. It earned him three months' keep and our attention. It was gross self-indulgence on my part to think a man of 40 could change. 37. Bound to be set... What? <laughs> Nothing. 37? <laughs> of course he was set in his ways. He enjoyed it, though. He was grateful to you for bringing him to the country. He did enjoy it in the beginning. I suppose one can't stifle all one's impulses. <laughs> I wouldn't help someone again. You've always been too kind. I've said this before. People take advantage. I don't know why your wife and children aren't enough. You can be kind to us. I did have inklings in my youth of the unity, as it were, of things. If such indeed exists, I appear to be excluded from it. <laughs> my efforts to join take the form of pity. Billy had quite enough pity for himself. As if anyone noticed, he was one quarter colored. Half. I thought his father was half. He distinctly told me the first night on the station that his father was black. He never saw him, so he wouldn't know. His father used to visit them sometimes. He never told me! He used to beat Billy up. You remember the story about when he was thrown out of the window? You've told it yourself at dinner. I thought that was the Irishman, his so-called stepfather. No, it was the father. He used to come and see them when he was drunk. I thought he was blind, Patty. How could a blind man throw him out of the window? Patty certainly used to beat him up. Perhaps he was only blind in one eye. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly told us a lot of lies. His mother. Oh. I... <sighs> I 
how windy it is tonight. And we still can't breathe. Shall I open the curtains? You can try it. Is Ingrid getting the children up in the morning? Yes, but they'll cry. Ugh, Ingrid's incompetent. She's not as good as Yvonne. Wasn't I right to send Yvonne away, as it turned out? You mean you'd rather your wife was raped Ugh. than the au pair girl? I mean, he was the kind of bastard I thought. Yvonne led him on. They take the children to romp in the fields when she play Ring of Roses with Ellie and stay fallen down. I hardly liked Ellie to be involved. I like to think of the open air as healthy. I used to see them from the window. Oh, I'm sure you did. Well, Ingrid's got bigger bosoms than Yvonne, so you've done all right. When do I look at Ingrid? She looks at you! I hadn't noticed. I wouldn't blame you. Ingrid's not at all the type of girl. But there is a type of girl. There is a type of girl you fancy. You. But 15 years younger, if I went on not feeling up to it. We've understood for a long time what you get from me. I've no head. I don't understand what you do all day. You haven't managed to make me read. You're morbid. You would have felt too guilty before. So nothing's ever come to anything. But now you feel you've a right. Nonsense. You feel things aren't the same. They're not the same. I suppose I can't say what I might do. Raining at last. It may get cooler. Oh, come back to bed. It's a splendid night. The trees tossing about and so forth. It makes the commuting worthwhile. The nights in town make one more sensitive to nature. The air's quite a different quality. And now a weekend at last. We'll get you better. Do you hate him? Billy? Do you hate him? One can see both sides. I'm sure we both began to hate him when you had to send Yvonne away. I'd given up trying to talk to him by then. But fancy depending on Billy for domestic help. Everyone said the same. I was quite right to lose my temper. One shouldn't expect too much. He'd start whatever I wanted quite sweetly, but never finish. Not that he had anything better to do. He followed me about. If people came to tea, he stayed in the room. <laughs> he was essentially boring. I was quite prepared to treat him as a friend, but what return did I get? The whole episode was one more mistake. But he was at his most utterly, utter, utterly loathsome when we'd finally kicked him out and he didn't have the decency to leave the area. All that time at the end, right up! That was unforgivable, I must say. I still feel faint if the phone rings. I know it's not in the realms of possibility to find him leaning against the car park wall, but I still flinch when I come out of the station. He must have wasted an inordinate amount of time because he can't have known which train I was on or even which day, and yet I could always count on his being there. I never spoke to him at that time. Even when I made it perfectly clear by ignoring him, even when I said quite loudly, go away, Billy, a dog would have obeyed, stumbling after me to the car, distorting his face against the window, pleading with me quite unintelligibly since I couldn't hear a word through the glass. He'd suddenly be there beside me when I was going shopping and wait outside every shop. I had to take the car. He got us a bad name in the village. I used to see him from the window sleeping in the field. We should have called the police. He used to come into the garden. I did begin to fear for your safety. I was never afraid. I was angry. Not to be able to walk under my own trees. All out of love for us, he claimed. That was what really got me. Love for us. 
Oh, he was envious. One is more lucky than most people. Lucky? <laughs> I think we've suffered, suffered fantastically. <laughs> I meant materially, the house, the area, the way of life, the children. At least he didn't hurt the children. It hasn't been the worst possible. He was even fond of Ellie in his way. I would have killed him. At least we never saw him again. He came into the office. I don't count that. I haven't seen him. Do you feel at all that you love him? Of course I don't. Not at all? No. No. You're not going to start thinking that. No. But you are. It happened. But he hated us. But at the end, you didn't struggle. You know how things can be. You know yourself you had that moment on the station in London the night you brought him down. You kept me awake so late while you explained. You'd had this moment of feeling close to him and rational considerations dropped away. They were your words. But that moment seems nothing now. You said to him at the time, You can count on me. And now? What now? You feel indifferent towards him, would you say? That can't be right. He doesn't seem some sort of ideal lover. He might. You might have a fixation. If you understand the term. <laughs> I haven't. I can imagine how I would feel if I did feel what you say. There was a time when we both liked him. And possibly, I have a sentimental... <sighs> the father of my child, that feeling, though of course it wasn't a child. But it's not entirely sentimental to say it would have been a child. No more than that. How can I help being jealous? You said you wouldn't be. How can I help it? Because I can't bear it. You wish you'd had his child. Of course I didn't want his degenerate child. You could have kept it. I told you at the time I would have accepted it as a child of the family. And loved it? Like Ellie? And what would people have said? Even the law says it's right in the case of rape. It wasn't rape. It was as good as rape. Now where are you going? Just going! Now, Roz, come back here. Going out. Roz. Going away. Roz! Somewhere! Oh, yes. Roz. You frightened me. You're beautiful. Oh, you frightened me. Your hair. I can wring it. I never thought you'd come after me. I have my moments. Are you happy? Yes. And you are. Yes. We'll be all right. Of course we are! Why, Roth, come in. Must we? Come into bed. Is it nice? I'll make you warm. <sighs> We're so wet. <laughs> the footprints. Ingrid. Ingrid will Jill. think it was a burglar. Barefoot. <laughs> Dripping. Hush. We'll wake her. Or the children worse. Hush then. Ugh, oh, look at me. How wet. Here's a towel. How happy we are sometimes. 
I'll dry your hair. We're together again. Ugh, but kiss me. There now. Come, let me dry your hair. But you're sad all of a sudden. No. You are. No. Yes, don't lie about it. It's all been so unpleasant. But you wanted to make love. It was me that didn't. It will come right in time. But I thought you'd be so glad. I would have thought so, but it seems not. I might as well have had the baby. You see? You do want it. I do miss something! <sighs> it was such a load off my mind when it was all over. Shall I tell you the best moment? Just before they give you the anesthetic. Perhaps it's even better to look back on at the time. I was a little... Friend. The doctors hardly look like people because you can't see their heads properly. They're covered from head to foot with green equipment, except their eyes. It's a bit like something underwater. So you lie there on your narrow table with a pleasant floating sensation from the first injection you had downstairs, and you know that in a minute you'll be gone. Not asleep. You know it can't be like sleep at all because I'm alive to anything that happens when I'm asleep, aren't I? A child only has to murmur. But in, but in the case of the anesthetic, you know they'll be doing ghastly things to you in just a moment. But from your own point of view, you won't be at all. You miss all the unpleasantness. Like, like being dead. It stopped raining. The wind's dropped. You might have a blanket. I do have one memory of Billy in the, in the early days, which isn't altogether painful. I usually find our picnics by the river somewhat routine. One goes, of course, for the children's benefit. One's own childhood picnics were a joy. You may remember the occasion, an April day, unprecedentedly hot. So we felt we must go out, though I brought a sizable pile of work home. I believe I sat up late. An English scene so remarkable for its pale green that it seemed even at the time like a memory, or indeed a photograph. We were hiring a large rowing boat with a wicker seat and ropes to steer with, and I just got in and, and, and was keeping it steady, and we helped the children down, and they sat still, and you got in. Billy was hesitating on the bank in that old blue shirt of mine, and, and he didn't get in. He, he smiled and said, I've never been in a boat. And then Ellie put up her hand and said, Come on, Billy, don't be frightened. <laughs> She'd been in a boat so many times, you know, and, and, and only three. It brought tears to my eyes at the time. He was certainly lying because he told me he'd worked his passage to South America. Ah, oh, the birds. What I shudder to think of is the night he came here, soon after we'd finally got him out of the house and I thought we were finally going to have some well-deserved peace. And then the telephone. He went on ringing the entire evening. I'll never forget it. There wasn't time to knit so much as one row between calls, crying and saying he was going to kill himself, so we finally had to leave the phone off. 
and ten minutes later, we heard the doorbell chime, and I knew that was the worst moment. You should never have let him in. It must have taken an hour to get him out. How could a grown man cry so much? What did he expect us to believe? That he'd really come to love us so much he couldn't bear to leave us? He was drunk. Or hooked on one of those ghastly drugs. So he finally made you pull him by the feet. I can see him now on his stomach, clutching at everything he passed. At my ankles, but I kicked him off. At the table leg, at the drawing room door. And of course he caught his fingers. Stupid fool! All down the stairs, clutching at the banisters. I'm quite surprised he didn't pull one out. But he's not a strong man at all, and he grabbed the coat rack in the hall. So it crashed over, and all the time crying, saying, Please, please, I thought he was going to wake the children. Out of the front door at last, down the steps with a horrible bump, down the drive, clutching furrows in the gravel till at last you got him outside the gate and he dumped on the grass verge. He must have enjoyed such a scene. You know when he came to see me in the office, we had a bit of a skirmish. It was very embarrassing, in fact, because, of course, it couldn't be kept quiet. The room was quite smashed up. Miss Hutchins came in and saw us and, and very wisely, rang the police. By the time they came, he was unconscious. They had to carry him off. I'll I'll have to appear at his trial and give evidence. You weren't hurt? No. (laughs) Hardly at all. getting light. I suppose I really ought to draw the curtains. But nothing's going to stop me going to sleep. The light's not unpleasant. I sleep badly now, don't I? I won't last. I have bad dreams. One night there was an explosion and I knew it had killed me. Everything was unsteady and far away and I must have been falling slowly to the ground. It was too late to think of you or the children or anything to do with staying alive. I thought, yes, I don't mind dying if it's like this. If there's no pain, but let this be all. And I woke up. I dream of something violent every night. I dare say it's the operation. I never dream of Billy or the child. I sometimes think though, One of my children was so small, only an inch or so, so stupid. A mental age of eight, of eight weeks from conception. What sort of mind is that? Even less of a person than Billy. It's not, it's not only light now, there's actual sun and I'm still not asleep. I, it's going to be a nice hot day. That's a comfort. I, I, I do, I do find I'm afraid to go to sleep. Just as, just as I'm afraid of going off, I get the feeling that, like in a nightmare, but with no content. I fright, I'm frightened something's about to happen. <laughs>